Hey friends, today we are going to take a few items from my recent thrift hauls and we are going to flip them for a profit. First up today is this cool piece of salvage. So I went to a thrift store here in town called Charlie's. It is a Charlie's thrift venture and it is a ton of fun. I got a little bit of footage so I'll try to sneak some in here. I didn't grab a lot because I was having so much fun. I grabbed this piece. It was not priced. He said five dollars on this piece and I didn't argue him. I thought that was a good price. I'm going to salvage these two little square pieces all of these spindles and I'm thinking I'll even probably end up cutting these in half. What do we think? I want to turn them into little Christmas ornaments. All right, so I went out to the garage and I used my scroll saw to cut my pieces in half. And then I also used the scroll saw to cut off the extra trim around these pieces. So now they're even. All right, I'm going to paint two sets of six ornaments and then the ones that did not um, come out so easily, I'm going to turn these into tree trunks. So we're gonna start off, I'm gonna do some in a good old classic red marquee and then I'm gonna do some in apothecary. I am actually really loving this color combo this year. It's looking very vintage vibes to me. I am using my Klingon R12. This is the smallest brush I carry. And since it's a round brush, it's really good at getting around the curves of these little spindles. Now, if y'all haven't used DIY paint before, it is a very thick, highly pigmented clay-based paint, which means my coverage is impeccable. Look at that. I'm just gonna do one coat on these. If I don't get 100% full coverage, that's okay, because I'm going to be distressing them and that will make distressing even easier. Because this red is so pigmented, I'm just gonna use a little um, disinfectant wipe here to distress. Since DIY paint is water soluble until it's sealed, you can use a wet rag, or in this case, a disinfectant cloth, and pull back some of that paint. That way I don't have to sand and get this red pigment everywhere. All right, I have got them all distressed, super cute, wet distressing, and now we'll get them waxed up. I'm gonna take a little bit of my wax out of the container and put it here on my parchment paper. If I dip into my clear wax over and over, I'm gonna turn my clear wax pink. We don't want that. And then I just got a sponge applicator here and I'm gonna apply a nice thin layer across the entire piece. For an extra special touch, I'm going to grab my DIY white wax. I've got just a little bit on the lid. And again, y'all, the consistency of this wax, if you have not used it before, it is buttery smooth, but fluffy. I'm using a basic chip brush to give these a light brushing of the white wax to highlight all of the edges. Okay, on the beautiful red ones, I'm going to highlight them with a little bit of the golden rule. This is a gold gilding wax by DIY. And again, that consistency, you cannot beat it. This one I do apply just with my finger because I don't want too much. Just a little bit, oh my gosh, so pretty. All right, now we are going to take these tiny little eye hooks and screw them into the ornament. I'm gonna go on the flat surface up here. I just like that little drippy shape, but of course you could hang them either way you liked. You could even take these out and put them in the other end and switch the look up because they don't create a very big hole. And if this hurts your fingers, grab some needle nose pliers. And of course, these are silver here, but I'm gonna fix that, no worries. Now I've grabbed my golden ticket. This is also a gold product, but it's in the patina line. So it is self-sealing. It has a built-in sealer. I'm gonna take it right on top of my little eye hooks and it'll probably take a couple of coats to get the coverage I'm looking for. And now that little eye hook just blends in so much better. 
All right, I'm gonna use a little bit of this rusted wire I have on the red ones and probably a little bit of jute rope on the apothecary ones. And here is a look at the final project. I love the way these ornaments came out. It is a great little farmhouse touch to your decor. The sets of six are selling on my site for $14.95 each. Drop me a comment down below. Are you going to recreate some of these ornaments for yourself? For the little pieces that were kind of broken, I took them out and cut them down nice and flat. Now I have drilled a hole in them, is using my drill and a wood bit. So now I have got a tree trunk. But the problem is I couldn't find any trees, y'all. All I had were a couple little random ones out of my stash. They weren't matching and I wanted to make two sets of three on these. So I came up with an idea to make my own adorable little trees. I have a ton of this random spare floral left. So I started looking through it. This is obviously a pine pick. It's, you know, supposed to go this direction. But if you take it and you turn it upside down and cut it down to shape, it makes the perfect little Christmas tree. So let's get a few more cut. I'm going to cut straight across the bottom here to make a flat bottom like the base of the tree, okay? And then we'll just trim up a few of these top branches to give it that nice tapered tree shape. And it's that easy. Um, you can probably find a lot of these pine type picks at your thrift stores, so be sure you're checking out the floral, checking out the old wreaths. How cute is that? It's this like adorable little shabby pine tree now. And I'm just going to take some hot glue into the base of my tree. Down into that little hole I made. And our tree will go in. Just like so. I was able to make two sets of the little mini spindle trees and they are just so adorable. These would be great as a tiny touch in a vignette or on a tiered tray up in a windowsill. I made two different styles. They are listed at $13.95 each for this set of three. And for these bottle brush trees that I spray painted brown last year, I glued them into two rusty old knobs and two amber glass jars. And y'all, I am loving the neutral brown tones. These would be a great transition piece from fall into Christmas.
If you're wondering where to find any of the products I'm using or to find any of my thrift flips, you can go to upcycledbybree.com and I have everything listed over there. I also have a booth here local in Topeka, Kansas at the Owl's Nest at 2901 Southeast Adams. My booth is called Upcycled by Brie and it is number 1445. For this next flip, I have got one of these sleds. Now, both of them have already sold. I decoupaged a Santa on one. This customer emailed me and requested a stencil. So we're gonna put a beautiful grain sack stripe on here because she didn't want anything too over the top. It had a lot of dings and nicks, so I'm gonna go over first with some 220 grit sandpaper. To bring the richness of that wood back, I'm gonna use a little bit of DIY Dark and Decrepit. It is in the liquid patina line and it has a built-in sealer. So this can act as a couple of different products. Um, you can use it as a self-sealing all natural stain like I'm doing right here. You can also use this as a top coat um, over white paint to give an antiqued look. You can use it as a transfer gel and a decoupage medium for an old rustic look. I use it most often just like this as a stain. So this is my JRV Grain Sack Stripe Stencil. It comes with a couple of different stencils. You can kind of mix and match them and make your own stripes. This is a much easier method than taping off my entire piece. I am going to put this one in place with a little bit of tape just to help hold it still. I have my one inch stencil brush. We're gonna use that same beautiful aviary farmhouse green color. A Little bit of paint on my brush, offloading most of it off onto a paper towel using a very dry brush here. That's gonna be the key to a nice crisp stencil. With the grain sack stripes, I like to hold my finger over the part of the stencil where I'm working, working in small sections, and I usually use a pouncing method on the smaller stripes, and then I will go in and swirl the larger section. I went with marquee in the middle, and I love the combination of red and green against the dark wood. There are just a couple little spots where I got impatient, but I love the grain sack stripe stencil. I went with green and red. Now I'm going to do just the tarniest bit of distressing where I got a little bit greedy with my paint. To give the piece a final seal, I'm going in with just a little bit of my DIY clear wax over my grain sack stripe. I'm using a paper towel here so I can control my wax a little bit better. I don't want to smear the two colors together. That red is very pigmented. And while I'm getting some pigment off on my paper towel, notice it's not pulling all of my paint off or anything. It's just very highly pigmented paint. Not every color will do it this so much when you wax, but the red definitely does. I thrifted these sleds for around $4 each. The grain sack stripe sled has sold, but the Santa sled is still available on my site for $22.95. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know which one is your favorite. So I grabbed this adorable little harvest basket at the thrift store. I paid about $1.35 for it and I have taped one of my JRV stencils on. I love these stencils. They're super thick. They are made to be used over and over. They're great for resellers, but look, I can tape it down and get a great curve out of the stencil without damaging it. I have my 3 8 inch stencil brush and I'm using a DIY aviary. It is a gorgeous green color. Just a very little bit of paint on my brush and I'm actually gonna offload most of that paint onto a paper towel, leaving a very dry brush. Then I will just come over my stencil with a light swirling motion and start filling in the words I want to show.
And for the reveal. Now I have grabbed two of my mini grain sack stencils. They've got some smaller words too, and I'm just going to mix and match my stencils up a little bit to add a few more words to my basket. So y'all don't be afraid to mix and match. Nicely. Notice when you wax that paint, it darkens up. As the paint dries, it will lighten up again and dry somewhere in between the dark and light color. I love what a quick, simple makeover these little harvest baskets make. I added in some leftover floral and this basket is done. It's listed on my site at $11.95. Y'all, I hope you had as much fun as I had today at taking these thrifted items and flipping them for a profit. If you did, be sure to like this video, give me a big thumbs up, send it out to a friend. All of those things really help. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. And until next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye, friends. Hey friends, today we are going to be taking some items from my recent thrift box. <laughs> I cannot get this intro. <laughs>